Hello, my name is Fabiana Marietta, team leader of project number 24086. Today I am joined by my teammates Manuel Amavisca and Mike Brown. Our senior project is about produced water treatment and its potential use in potash mining within Carlsbad, New Mexico. What is produced water? Produced water is a term used to refer to water generated as a byproduct of oil and natural gas extraction. Oil and natural gas reservoirs tend to have water naturally found in them, and this water is caught up during the extraction process in oil and gas pumping operations. What are the concerns of produced water? Produced water is highly contaminated with hazardous substances. They include high amounts of carcinogenic organic compounds, heavy metals, and salts. The local geographic makeup can also alter the contents of produced water, so there is a diverse array of contaminants found in this wastewater. The most common method of this a produced water disposal is deep well injection. Deep well injection is the placement of fluid deep into underground geologic formations. Fluids typically injected are wastewater, brine water, and chemical water mixtures. Deep well injection is not without its environmental and health concerns. There is a risk of the well failing where injected fluid migrates and contaminates local groundwater supplies. Many communities rely on groundwater and contaminated groundwater poses a serious health threat to surrounding communities. Our solution to mitigate this environmental concern is reclamation of produced water. Reclamation is the treatment process of converting wastewater into water that is suitable for a specific use. This has not only the benefit of mitigating the environmental concerns over produced water, but also reducing the water burden facing industries and communities. The objective of this project is to successfully remove contaminants from our produced water so that it is suitable for potash mining. Contaminants we wish to remove include hydrocarbons, hydrogen sulfide, total dissolved solids, total suspended solids, and heavy metals. We also aim to design a treatment process to have as minimal cost as possible in terms of unit operations and maintenance, while also meeting operation standards set by the EPA, New Mexico, Environment Department, and OSHA. Aspen helps in sizing the equipment, which would then tell us how much raw material we would need to make the shell and tube heat exchanger, and also the setup of the shell and tube heat exchanger. And this is done to make sure that the water going into the CSTR is within the temperature of the microorganisms within the CSTR. A major concern for our treatment process was the reduction or altogether elimination of dissolved hydrogen sulfide from the produced water. While relatively harmless when dissolved, its tendency to volatize into its incredibly dangerous gas form makes it the most immediately dangerous contaminant in our treatment process. The project team decided on oxidizing the dissolved hydrogen sulfide into a relatively harmless elemental sulfur and decided on an aerobic continuously stirred tank reactor to avoid the unintended production of sulfuric acid, as seen from this visual. BioWin, a wastewater treatment process simulator, was utilized to model and size all of the equipment necessary to ensure the CSDR function correctly. It was also used to estimate raw material use and calculations and was fundamental in determining the final produced water concentrations in terms of total dissolved solids, total suspended solids, and the final dissolved hydrogen sulfide concentration. As we can see, our main process consists of four equipment operations, the equalization tank, the aerobic CSTR, the clarifier, and the dewatering tank. The blue cyan cylinders are pumps used to aid in sludge displacement, and the green pipe is our raw material and freshwater addition. These add-ons allow our sulfur oxidizing bacteria to properly convert the hydrogen sulfide into elemental sulfur. The main variables adjusted were incoming flow rate, raw material addition, and the individual sizing of our equipment. This was done to meet our produced water flow rate goal, 
to ensure the full efficiency of the sulfur oxidation and to obtain ideal hydraulic residence time for our equipment operations. And on to the next slide of results PNID. The PNID used level control on the gravity separator to ensure the different liquids were separated appropriately to the desired streams. Full and level control on the heat exchanger is used to maintain a responsive operation. Level control is known to be unresponsive and therefore cascaded to improve responsiveness of the process stream. A temperature measurement ver variable is added so that the temperature will reach the set point temperature of 35 degrees from 71 degrees Celsius, which was inputted into the heat exchanger and controlled by a valve. Equalization basin holds the water and moderates its flow into the CSTR bioreactor. Level flow and sensors are required. The same process is used for CSTR. For clarifier, simple level switches to separate the sludge and contaminated water from process water help reduce cost and serve the same function as sensors. Having an analysis sensor at the end ensures process water is up to standard and contaminated water does not enter. And the level controls the motor of the pump moving the sludge. Flow controls controls the pump for the dewatering unit, removing the sludge while the water moves along the pipes. Overall, our proposed treatment process generates 4,800 gallons per minute of treated produce water. From this production, 850 gallons per minute of the water is fresh, or about 30% of the final flow. This freshwater addition consists of 230 milligrams per liter of phosphorus and 550 milligrams per liter of nitrogen. These additions are integral to the proper functioning of the aerobic bioreactor. Our process does not significantly increase or reduce the brine concentration in the final flow, meaning that our current brine concentration, which is about 3,400 kilograms per minute, remains below the potash mine's typical brine concentration, which is about 4,800 kilograms per minute. Our final hydrogen sulfide concentration is about 10 milligrams per liter. This is a 79% reduction in dissolved hydrogen sulfide from our water. Our final total suspended solids concentration is about 1 milligram per liter. This is a 97% reduction. An important aspect of using treated produce water in potash brine mining is its price. Ideally, treated produce water should be a financially attractive alternative to the use of fresh water and the associated costs with its purchase and disposal. As we can see from this table, steps to massively minimize the use of fresh water in mining operations within Eddy County have already occurred after the year 2010. Mines have opted to use extracted or recycled brine water instead. This is a good sign that mining operations may now be interested in non-fresh water sources, like produce water. Fresh water withdrawal and brine disposal costs are anticipated to rise. For fresh water withdrawal, we expect a 7 cent increase per barrel per year. For brine disposal, we expect a third of a cent increase per barrel per year. While these numbers are small, they will add up over time. Further, these are estimations from trends two decades in the past. These rates may change with increased water scarcity and increased concern over brine disposal wells. On the left, we can see a graphical comparison between freshwater withdrawal, brine disposal, and produced water treatment rates. The team assumes that any processes still utilizing fresh water will also eventually have to dispose of the brine, so these two rates are cumulative. According to our calculations for the overall cost of our treatment process, our treated produced water became a viable competitive alternative around 2017. This means that our proposed treatment process may already be a financially viable alternative in the present day. Overall, our treatment process could do with some improvements. The treatment process did not generate a high enough flow rate to meet our goal of 5,300 gallons per minute. However, this value is already an overestimation and our current flow rate may be acceptable for our target mine. Our treatment process does not significantly increase or decrease the brine concentration within the produced water. Thus, the brine concentration remains below the maximum concentration of 4,800 kilograms per minute. Our treatment process may not be robust enough to reduce the dissolved hydrogen sulfide to safe levels. There are no regulations regarding dissolved hydrogen sulfide, but the volatilized gas form of the contaminant may pose a risk to technicians and miners who may handle the produced water. Further treatment, including the possible addition of an air stripper, may be necessary to ensure the safety of employees regarding possible hydrogen sulfide gas poisoning. Thanks to the high efficiency of the API gravity separator, the treated produced water is expected to have little to no free oil present. The excessive presence of free oil in the water would damage equipment, be a potential fire risk, and may prevent ultraviolet light from penetrating the water, 
therefore hindering the crystallization of potassium. From an economic standpoint, and based on our calculations, our proposed treatment process is an economically feasible alternative to using freshwater and brine water in potash mining. However, the team finds the current hydrogen sulfide concentration concerning enough to suggest the addition of a more rigorous equipment operation. We also suggest that a thorough risk and management assessment should be conducted to ensure the safety of all the engineers, technicians, and miners who may be potentially exposed to the treated produced water. Team 24086 we would like to thank our project mentor, Harry Patton, as well as Bob Simmel and Gordon Pracco. We would also like to thank our former teammate, Rafif Ramadan, and the Chemical and Environmental Engineering Department for their continuous support.